M286, M386, and M486. AMD entered the X86 market by building Intel-compatible central processing units for personal computers. The M286 arrived in the mid-1980s as a software-compatible version of the Intel 80286. It executed the same x86 instruction set, so programs written for the personal computer ecosystem ran without changes. The important technical feature of this generation was protected mode, which allowed the processor to address much larger amounts of memory and to isolate programs from each other for stability. In practice, most consumer systems still booted in real mode for older software, but the AM286 established AMD as a reliable second source for central processing units and helped reduce system prices through competition. The AM386 moved AMD into true leadership in the early 1990s. Architecturally, the 386 family introduced a full 32-bit design with 32-bit registers, a 32-bit data path, and a 32-bit address space which dramatically expanded what operating systems could do. Hardware paging enabled virtual memory, letting computers use disk space to extend usable memory. For buyers, AMD's M386 parts were known for strong clock speeds for the time and aggressive pricing, which accelerated the adoption of 32-bit operating systems such as early Microsoft Windows NT and advanced versions of Microsoft Windows and Unix-like systems. Software compatibility with the existing x86 stack remained intact, so businesses could move forward without rewriting applications. The M486 refined the same instruction set and brought higher per-clock performance through deeper pipelining and an on-chip level 1 cache, which reduced trips to slower main memory. Many AM486 models also integrated a floating-point unit in the DX variants, improving performance in mathematics-heavy tasks such as computer-aided design and early three-dimensional graphics. Write-back cache policies and clock doubling or clock tripling models, commonly labeled DX2 and DX4, delivered major speed gains while staying on affordable motherboards. In the marketplace, the AM486 cemented AMD's reputation for delivering comparable performance to Intel at lower prices, setting the stage for AMD's first fully in-house designs that followed K5. The AMD K5, released in 1996, was the company's first fully in-house x86 microarchitecture. Unlike the AM386 and AM486, which were reverse-engineered Intel-compatible chips, the K5 was designed completely by AMD engineers. The goal was to compete directly with Intel's Pentium. Architecturally, the K5 translated the traditional x86 complex instruction set into smaller, simpler micro-operations internally. A design in Inspired by risk principles, this approach should have improved efficiency, but the K5 suffered from long pipelines and design complexity that limited its clock speeds. While it could execute Pentium class instructions, the K5 was often late to market and slower in real-world applications. Limited yields and difficulty scaling to higher frequencies meant it struggled to gain wide adoption. Despite its shortcomings, the K5 was historically important as AMD's first attempt at original CPU design, proving the company could engineer its own processor architecture rather than just cloning Intel's K6 series. In 1997, AMD acquired a company called NextGen, and much of NextGen's engineering work went into the design of the K6 series. The AMD K6 processors arrived as credible competitors to Intel's Pentium and Pentium 2. They offered full support for the MMX multimedia instruction set, strong integer performance, and could fit into existing Socket 7 motherboards, which made them attractive for for upgrades. The K6-2 in 1998 was especially popular because it introduced AMD's 3D Now instruction set, aimed at accelerating three-dimensional graphics in an era before dedicated graphics cards were powerful. The K6-3 followed with an integrated Level 2 cache, boosting performance further. For budget-conscious buyers, the K6 line delivered excellent value and helped AMD gain wider recognition in the consumer market. This period was critical in establishing AMD as a serious competitor rather than just a second source supplier. K7 Athlon The Athlon, launched in 1999 under the K7 architecture, was AMD's true breakthrough into high-performance computing. 
Built for the new Slot A interface, the Athlon introduced a completely new microarchitecture with a high-speed double data rate front-side bus licensed from Digital Equipment Corporation's Alpha processors. It included three fully pipelined floating-point units, giving it excellent performance in scientific and graphics workloads. The Athlon quickly became the first consumer central processing unit to break the 1 gigahertz clock speed barrier in the year 2000, a milestone that Intel had been racing toward with the Pentium 3. Performance benchmarks showed the Athlon beating or matching Intel's best chips of the era in both integer and floating point tasks. With competitive performance and aggressive pricing, the Athlon K7 gave AMD its first real chance to lead the processor market, K8. In 2003, AMD introduced the K8 architecture, which powered the Athlon 64 for consumers and the Opteron for servers. This generation was revolutionary for several reasons. First, AMD added native support for 64 bit x86 instructions, later called x86-64 or AMD64, extending the traditional 32-bit instruction set to handle vastly larger memory spaces. Second, AMD integrated the memory controller directly onto the processor die eliminating the bottleneck of the Northbridge chip and reducing memory latency. Third, AMD created HyperTransport, a high-speed interconnect that replaced the front-side bus for communication between the processor, chipset, and other components. These innovations gave the Athlon 64 and Opteron strong performance advantages over Intel's Pentium 4, especially in multiprocessor and memory-intensive workloads. For several years, AMD enjoyed clear technical leadership, and the K8 architecture laid the foundation for all future x86-64 computing. K10 AMD released the K10 architecture in 2007 with the Phenom brand for desktops and Barcelona for servers. The most important feature was the introduction of true native quad-core designs, meaning all four cores were on a single piece of silicon rather than multiple dual-core dies packaged together. This improved communication between cores and reduced latency compared to Intel's multi-chip modules at the time. The K10 also featured an improved memory controller, HyperTransport 3.0, for faster interconnect speeds and a larger shared level 3 cache. However, early phenoms were affected by a hardware bug known as the TLB bug, which forced a BIOS workaround that reduced performance. Even after fixes and later models like the Phenom 2, AMD struggled because Intel's Core 2 Duo and Core 2 Quad processors delivered much higher instructions per clock and higher clock speeds. While K10 showed AMD's ability to innovate with native quad-core designs, it was overshadowed in the marketplace and marked the beginning of a difficult period for the company. Bulldozer Family In 2011, AMD launched the Bulldozer architecture, which powered the FX series of processors. Bulldozer introduced a new design concept called modules. Each module contained two integer cores that shared some resources, such as the floating point unit and instruction fetch. AMD marketed these modules as multiple cores, which gave the FX processors very high advertised core counts, up to eight cores in mainstream models. In practice, however, the shared resources meant per core performance was much weaker than Intel's Sandy Bridge and later Core i series processors. The long pipeline and design trade-offs led to poor instructions per clock, high power consumption, and underwhelming gaming performance. Later iterations such as Piledriver, Steamroller, and Excavator tried to refine the design but never fully closed the gap. While the Bulldozer family looked impressive on paper with high clock speeds and many cores, in reality, it damaged AMD's reputation and left Intel with a near monopoly on high-performance desktop CPUs through most of the 2010s. Zen 1 In 2017, AMD made a major comeback with the launch of the Zen architecture under the rise brand. Built on a 14 nanometer process, Zen processors offered up to 8 cores and 16 threads for mainstream desktop users, something Intel was not offering at the time. Zen introduced simultaneous multi-threading, AMD's version of Intel's hyper-threading, which allowed each core to handle two threads. The new architecture provided a dramatic improvement in instructions per clock compared to Bulldozer, often more than 50% higher. The Ryzen 7 1800X became the flagship of the Ryzen 1000 series, delivering workstation-level performance to consumer desktops. Ryzen also reintroduced AMD 
as a serious competitor in both gaming and productivity workloads, and the long-lived AM4 socket gave buyers confidence that their motherboards would support multiple generations of upgrades. Zen Plus In 2018, AMD refined the Zen design into Zen Plus, produced on a 12-nanometer process. While it was not a complete architectural overhaul, Zen Plus brought lower cache and memory latencies, slightly higher clock speeds, and improved efficiency. The Precision Boost 2 and XFR2 features allowed processors to dynamically adjust their frequencies more intelligently based on workload and cooling, resulting in better real-world performance. The Ryzen 2000 series, led by chips such as the Ryzen 7270X, closed the gap with Intel in gaming while continuing to dominate in multi-threaded productivity thanks to high core counts at affordable prices. Zen Plus demonstrated AMD's ability to refine its designs quickly and deliver consistent generational improvements, keeping momentum going into the next major leap. Zen 2 In 2019, AMD introduced Zen 2, a transformative architecture built on a 7 nanometer process by TSMC. Zen 2 debuted the chiplet design, where multiple small processor dies called core complexes were connected through a central input output. Die. This modular approach reduced manufacturing costs, improved yields, and allowed AMD to scale core counts more easily. Mainstream desktop processors reached up to 16 cores and 32 threads with the Ryzen 9 3950X, far beyond Intel's offerings at the time. Zen 2 also introduced support for PCI Express 4.0, doubling bandwidth for graphics cards and storage devices. Performance per clock improved significantly, making Zen 2 processors competitive in both single-threaded tasks like gaming and heavily multi-threaded workloads such as video editing and software compilation. The combination of efficiency, scalability, and features gave AMD a massive advantage in value and performance, marking a turning point in the CPU market. Zen 3 Launched in late 2020, Zen 3 refined the chiplet design and made major architectural changes. The biggest improvement came from unifying the core complex. Up to eight cores now shared a single large level 3 cache, reducing latency and boosting gaming performance. Instructions per clock improved by around 19% compared to Zen 2, which finally allowed AMD to surpass Intel in both gaming and productivity. The flagship Ryzen 95950X offered 16 cores and 32 threads, while even mid-range processors like the Ryzen 5560X became some of the best-selling CPUs for gamers. Zen 3 was widely praised as one of the strongest CPU launches in AMD's history, firmly re-establishing the company as a leader in both innovation and market share. Zen 4 In 2022, AMD released the Zen 4 architecture, moving to the new AM5 socket after years of supporting AM4. Zen 4 processors were manufactured on TSMC's 5 nanometer process, allowing higher clock speeds and better energy efficiency. They introduced support for DDR5 memory and PCI Express 5.0, giving access to the latest high-speed storage and graphics technologies. The architecture also expanded instructions per clock, improved branch prediction, and enhanced integrated graphics by adding RDNA 2-based graphics cores on most models. Ryzen 7000 chips reached boost frequencies above 5.5 GHz, making them some of the fastest consumer processors available. However, the platform required new motherboards and DDR5 memory, which increased upgrade costs for buyers. Despite this, Zen 4 maintained AMD's lead in multi-core performance and positioned the company well for future growth. Zen 5 In 2024, AMD introduced Zen 5, its most advanced architecture yet. Built on a refined 4 nanometer process with redesigned front end and execution pipelines, Zen 5 focused on further improving efficiency and instructions per clock. A key emphasis was on accelerating artificial intelligence and machine learning tasks with new instructions and optimized scheduling. The Ryzen 9000 series delivered higher performance at lower power, continuing AMD's chiplet strategy with improved interconnect bandwidth. Early models such as the Ryzen 99950X pushed multi-core performance even further while maintaining strong single-threaded efficiency for gaming. With Zen 5, AMD strengthened its competitive position against Intel's latest architectures and signaled a long-term commitment to advancing both consumer and professional computing. I made an awesome video about every CPU architecture, so don't forget to watch it later, okay?